All righty. Now, um, let's see. Let's see where you're with. You're with KUSI. KUSI. What channel is that? That's uh, oh god, with all the digital, it's channel nine on uh, broadcast. No, it's channel nine on cable, channel fifty-one on broadcast, and channel eighteen on digital. I don't know. I won't be able to remember all that. So look for fifty-one. KUSI. KUSI. There you, there you go. All right, we are with it. <laughs> Lausma? That's that's how my dad says it, so I say it that way too. Okay. <laughs> it might be right. We're with Jack Lausma, who uh, flew on uh, Skylab, and you flew on one of the uh, shuttle flights too, one of the very first ones. I did, right after um, the uh, Skylab flight, I backed up the flight with the Russians. Mm -hmm. Didn't fly it, but it was one of the most interesting experiences I ever had. Right. It was Iron Curtain days. But then I flew the third test flight right. of the Columbia, and that was the one that landed at White Sands Missile Range. The only one so far. And why did you land there? Well, you know, we were landing in lake beds in those days because mm -hmm. we weren't exactly sure how this was all going to work out. So, Primary we were, was Edwards, right? Primary was Edwards with lots of different runways and runways you know, four or five miles long. Mm -hmm. uh, but about a week before we were going to land, a week before we took off, I guess you might say, Chris Kraft came in down our quarantine trail and says, Jack, the weather's bad in California. It's raining on a lake bed. Can't land there. Uh, what would you think about landing at the White Sands Missile Range? The other option is to be the first person to land on that runway at the Cape that's only got 15,000 feet on it. Right. And uh, well, I said, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Chris, uh, we do a lot of practice at White Sands, but there's only one runway and there uh, aren't many navigational aids and so forth. But if the weather's good, I'm sure we can do it. And he said, well, I can't guarantee the weather, but if you're for it, I'll be for it. If you want to go to White Sands, let's go. So I said, that's it. And the backup one was the hard run away at the Cape. We still wanted to land on a lake bed at that point in time. So that's how it worked out. And when we were going to come back, of course, after seven days, uh, there was a severe windstorm at White Sands. Mm -hmm. The uh, guys were flying practice approaches uh, with our shuttle training airplane. Couldn't see the runway. So about uh, 30 minutes before we were going to come back, he said, stop, wait, don't. Uh, you're going to have a, an extra day in your world's favorite vacation spot. And we did. <laughs> and uh, they said, you're going to come back to White Sands tomorrow. Right. And uh, if we can't come back there, you will be coming back to the Cape. So that's how it worked out. We had an 8D flight instead of a 7. We got, came to the 8th day in the flight plan, no flight plan. And so we finally had a chance to enjoy being there. We were working real hard after that flight. Now that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is when you're up there, you don't have a lot of spare time. When you go into space, you do it so seldom. You want to make sure you use every minute and capitalize on being there. If you could stay awake all night, you'd do it just to get the job done. And sometimes we do, uh, because we get behind once in a while when things don't go right. But, yeah, we uh, planned on a very busy flight plan, and we pulled it off. Very good. Special memories? Oh, uh, there's a lot of special memories with uh, any kind of space flight. Uh, but the, um, the thing you remember most is the, the launch. Right. And uh, if, uh, once you get past that, uh, you're probably going to make it. And uh, you get pretty safe and snug when you're up in space, and every day kind of thinks is about the same. Right. And one day it runs into another. But I recall in the Skylab space station, which is uh, two months later, right. that the things we remembered about being in orbit were the days we did the spacewalks. But the other great memory, of course, is coming back. And uh, being on the end of the runway or uh, sitting in the capsule, uh, uh, sloshing around in the ocean, it's a very professionally rewarding situation. Number one, you're alive. And uh, number two, you've done your job. And it's just professionally rewarding that, uh, memory, I guess. The, of all the memories, that would uh, top them all. Well, as Wally Shira once said, uh, you know, when the president said we want to go to the moon in return, he says that was the important part for me, was the return. The last part was the best. That's yes, right. Absolutely. <laughs> Good to meet you, sir. Same here. Nice talking with you. All the best. Hope you enjoy it here. Oh, I, I, you ready? Let me get a shot of your, your, oh, your hat? hat up there. Enough of an angle, or? <laughs> Got it. I'd love to stop, stay in chat, but we gotta, we're got trying to catch a few folks before you start playing. Good. Yeah, I guess they're going to get soft here pretty soon. Yeah. Let me tell you, your coincidence this morning, Ron Kaplan called